welcome back to Tony Northeastern. It seems like an age ago since I've been up here um, messing around on the railway uh, a couple of weeks in fact and uh, yeah so before we get into this week's video I just want to say a, a very warm felt thank you to everybody who has wished uh, Mrs. T uh, well on regarding um, uh, an operation that she's had quite recently but yeah thank you very much very much appreciated and the messages have been passed on thank you all right uh yes a couple of shout outs before we get stuck in first of all for jason uh, for mentioning the fact that there was no signal on this blind bend heading into jarrah road um, i was going to put a signal in but for coming the other way for coming out onto the branch line here to the right but um, yeah it's absolutely right there should be some form of signaling um, on this blind bend and there it is so thank you very much for that Jason and the second shout out is for Stephen over at Tame Valley Railways um, he's got a birthday coming up shortly and um, he's hoping to reach 500 subs for his birthday so everybody just wish, wish him luck and um, yeah pop along and give him a subscribe uh, hopefully he'll be well on his way to 500 subs so there you go Stephen hope you get your 500 subs mate well deserved right now then getting back to the last video the last video was about my top 10 bills and as you can see to the left there, one of them did not get mentioned, and that's the World War II bunker. Uh, probably didn't get mentioned because it's so well camouflaged that we forget it's there. <laughs> but there, there you go. And uh, other um, things that did not get mentioned is the newspaper stand, of course, which is just here. Um, Yet again, well camouflaged, I've completely forgot it was there. <laughs> That's the trouble with these bills. We make them, we put them where they're supposed to be sighted, and we forget about them. But yeah, another worthy mention. So thank you for everybody who had spotted the, um, the bills that I forgot to add. But then again, there's only 10 slots. So yeah. So let's move on to this week's video. Here we are, we're over at the 39 steps. Um, it was featured in the um, Green Menace video, um, but apart from that, we very rarely get to see the 39 steps, which leads all the way up to the fish and chip van and then onto the South Shield station. Um, yeah, so what we're going to be focusing on is this little area here. I want to start doing something about this because it's been like this ever since we put these 39 steps in. Um, as you can see, I've been toying around with adding buildings. Um, but I think I've come up with a cunning plan for this area. So let's mosey on over to the bench. And this is the inspiration behind my next build. It's a police box. Uh, I've seen this one on a layout at the Alton Model Railway Exhibition and I did ask uh, the guy who was operating the layout a few questions about this police box. Um, and it, it was in a dockyard um, somewhere up north and it's pre-war. So yeah so it's interesting to see it in this color a white and blue police box so let's have a, a look at a few more and uh, this one we all know as the TARDIS but it's painted in white by the looks of it and I can imagine that being blue um, yeah so I'm not sure where this one is it just says police fire and ambulance so it's a uh, uh, more or less a 999 box but uh, yeah that's just a telephone box inside one of the uh, railway museums I come across but even so 
it's a unique design, could easily be copied. And here we have a City of London police box. And I just like the look of how you've got this architecture here. Um, so yeah, I can imagine that being hand carved. Uh, this is probably in the early 1800s. And here we have another one. This one is in Reading. Uh, note again, police, uh, ambulance and fire. Note the telephone box is on the outside for easy access. Now this is the one that we all know. This is the Doctor Who TARDIS police box. So we'll just zoom into this one a little bit. And um, what I like about this uh, police box, you can actually see what's inside the police box. There's a stool, there's a little desk, some paperwork. Note again the telephone on the outside. And uh, judging by the telephone, it's got to be 1920s yet again. Zooming on this one. This one's in Glasgow. No, yeah, it is. It's in Glasgow. This one. Yeah, again, a nice, unique design. Quite easily be copied. And uh, <laughs> I like this one. Looks like. Uh, Jimmy Cagney phoning up the police. <laughs> he don't look like a detective, does he? Um, yeah, yet again, nice design. Uh, here we have a South Yorkshire police box in green, which is unusual. Um, I bet it wasn't green originally. Note the door there for the telephone on the outside. And here we have another one. Um, it looks like a shed with a beacon on it, but um, yet again, could be the same woman there using the phone. Oh no, that's got a sound box, so she's actually talking to somebody through the grills there. Let's just zoom in on that, you can have a proper look at it. Too much. There. So yeah, police boxes come in many various types and sizes. So the one I'm interested in is the South Yorkshire one. So if we just go back and get another look at it. And that's the one I'd like to copy and put my kind of spin on it. So let's get cracking. Evening all. As you know, um, with all my builds I always start with the doors and windows and that's how I've got the sizes um, for this police box um, so yeah so this is the shape I'm going to run with and so I've got my measurements and um, I've already started to cut some of the pieces so this is the front panel as it were so what I've done is I've divided it into segments um, so that when I curve it, the curve is perfectly round. So this is the template for trimming out the back. Um, these are the doors and windows. I've had to scrounge in my common handy box to see what windows and doors I can use. Um, these came off a HO building, similar to what I've used on um, Snookdown Farm. So basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the bottom window pane and just using the twin pane there that I've got there so that'll go alongside the door as it were so I've got to remove this paint on here this uh, gloss paint uh, this came off yet again uh, a double O building a plastic building and uh, it's slightly smaller than a normal door because if you look in the photographs they are slightly smaller. This measures uh, 24mm high and 10mm across. Um, 
you could get away with using a, a standard double A double O gauge door in the similar design, but it'll end up slightly wider, uh, probably 12 mil wide by 25 mil um, tall. But you can more or less build um, the same box um, using a, an ordinary double O gauge door. So, with that in mind, all I've got to do is trace that shape around the back wall. Notice I've left it a little bit longer than the drawings to form this curve. I've come up at 33 and then 41, and obviously with a couple of mil for the roof, that will give me the 42 mil. The so. plastic card that I'm using is 0.75 mil thick, not quite a millimeter, which means it's a lot less um, sanding and it's a lot easier to peel back like I'm doing here. Just peeling back right up to the pencil line and then once I get to the pencil line I just give it a light sanding down to the pencil line for the perfect match. Just doing the finishing touches to these side walls. Um, I'm just removing any glue and pencil marks, just using thinners. So as you can see, I've cleaned up the door as best as I could. Uh, I'm scraping the paint off and then using the thinners to take off as much of the paint as possible. When I cut the windows out, I kept the bits of plastic and I've put a sill there and I used the other bit to fill in uh, where I've cut the bottom window off. So when you look through, you can see that there's no daylight in there, in that corner there. So these are almost ready to glue together. Um, and here we have PC Popinicle. Um, he's a PD Marsh figure so I don't have to do anything with him um, as he's already painted but however the bad guy he needs scraping back and um, cutting off the plinth uh, his leg has got to be cut in half and mated so it looks like he's running away with his bag of swag So this is Roger the Burglar, the Rampant Burglar. He's, uh, well, he is wanted for many, many, many burglaries. So <laughs> that's what I've got to do with him. I've got to turn him into a bad guy. Uh, yeah, seem to have a lot of bad guys here on the northeastern. What were the Green Menace and the um, the Kalito Gang for the robbery? So I've now assembled the police box uh, onto the base. I've drilled a hole in the bottom. That's going to be for a flashing blue LED which is going to go uh, on the roof. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm working on some um, some glazing, some frosted glazing. So I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper. to give the illusion that we have frosted glass for the police box and uh, this is what it looks like so I'm only using the sandpaper on one, one side the other side will still say nice and uh, shiny as it were so I'll cut this up into small um, segments and then glue it onto the windows I'm just using super glue to stick the glazing in because it doesn't matter if it frosts up because, uh, well, it's frosted glass anyway. But I'm going to try and keep the shiny face facing outwards of the glazing. So just by putting that in there, straighten it up. So there you go, so that's the, the glazing in. So now we can have a, a proper look. 
Moving on a little bit, I've put some 2mm um, half round moulding, 27mm uh, up from the concrete base. Um, I had to mate at each corner and then glue them on, even put it around the back as well. Um, and I've also added at the door, as you can see. Uh, what I've done there, you see some little indents. So what I did before I put the door on, I put some indents in to look like a crown. So when that's painted up silver, it'll look like a crown. So we'll, we'll see. It might not work, it might work. I'll have to wait and see. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting some uh, 2 mil by 0.5 strip around the base of the box to form a plinth. So I'm just folding it uh, around because I think it'll be simpler rather than cutting uh, lots of little strips. As long as I keep the edges tight uh, I shouldn't have a problem. So once that's folded take it off and then really squeeze it home at 90 degrees and then we'll just mark it and cut it so it comes up to the door and that should then finish uh, the detailing on the box side apart from the um, corners that goes around the top some heavy duty corners but uh, we shall stick this on for now right so I've been looking around in my common handy box to put some sort of corners uh, along this edge and halfway along um, the the front here like it is in the photograph and I found this and I think this will finish it off a treat so I've already mated one corner and I've just got to glue that onto there and uh, if you see what that looks like, if I can just hold it in position. Yep, that will finish that top off nicely. So what I've done now is I've added some 1.5 quarter round to the top and that just finishes off that top edge. Um, the quarter round is 243 on the polystyrene evergreen strips so that now is, is beginning to look more and more like a police box right so now we start on the roof um, what I want to do here is add two pieces to the roof a piece that fits just inside and a piece that fits over the edge so we'll make a measurement and then we'll cut a strip and we'll just see how it falls over this edge. We want to go about a millimetre over either side. So we'll say 23.5 millimetres in width. And this is what I've done for the roof. Um, so I've drilled a, a 2.5 mil hole in the top and I've glued another piece of this 0.75 plastic for the inside that will help give it uh, a little bit of support as well on the inside for lining it up um, with the front and back on the box and uh, what I'm doing now is you notice it's quite shiny there so what I'm doing I'm just roughing it up with a little bit of sandpaper this is going to give it the asphalt texture on the top so I've just roughened it up a little bit both ways and when that's painted grey it'll just uh, had the illusion that it's asphalt on the top so yeah that's really roughed it up now using this one P120 grit right and I've already cut a little tiny piece of 3 mil straw but I've spliced it so that now will just push in through there and then we have our little beacon 
and he just needed to push it right through for the right height probably about three and a half mil and then once I've super glued that it's just a case of pushing the LED up from the bottom and uh, put it in cap on and then we can then glue this onto here so I've now fitted the LED inside um, there's not a lot of room in there for any details um, I have tested the LED and it does work and uh, it does look good now we have a, a little beacon on the top uh, it's just made of a, a little pip that I found in the coming handy box and I've just cut it down so it's flat and it sits on top of that little piece of straw that we stuck in earlier so now it's just a case of gluing the roof on and then we can paint it um, so here we go a little bit of a contact adhesive I've already pre-stressed the roof to form the shape because um, obviously all that work I've been doing to the roof um, has kind of lost its shape a little bit so we just got to hopefully see that it fits this time because um, I've only got one shot at this um, try not to get any glue on my fingers and we just got to hold that in place for about a minute or two making sure the roof is flush all the way around or the lip is the same all the way around before the glue goes off um, looks like the beacon's in the middle which is good so I'm just going to hold that there and wait for the plastic to melt um, this could take some time because I know what will happen the minute I leave go it's going to pop up and it will end up with a gap um, in the roof and we don't really want that if we can help it because I know when this plastic goes off it does go off quite hard but it does seem to be holding and there we go we shall see what this looks like when it's painted while well, waiting for the glue to dry on the police box I thought we'd have another look at Roger, our rampant burglar. He's, as you can see I've uh, cut his leg off and glued it back on at a 45 degree angle so it looks like he's kind of running. Um, obviously he's uh, committed a crime and he's got a bag of swag on his back. So. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to concentrate on him. I've already done, he's redone his skin tone, so I've put his face and hands back on. So I've just got to paint around uh, that. Hopefully that'll dry quite soon, because it's a uh, paint I'm using is a matte 35, and it's a Humbrol. No, it's not. It's, it's a Revel. As you can see there, it's a Revel. And um, so yeah, so we shall paint him up, and um, hopefully by the time I've painted him up, the police box will be dry enough for painting. And here is Roger Stolington now, and how do we know that he's the rampant burglar of the North Eastern? Well, because he's carrying his bag of loot <laughs> oh dear going mad going mad right so that's the burglar done and uh, the policeman like we said earlier we didn't have to do anything to him because he's already painted up but I've just decided to call him PC Pitkin the Norman Wisdom character out of the movie On the Beat so here he is, PC Pitkin. Right, so now 
being a bit more serious of course we're going to paint the post box no nope, not the post box the police box going loopy see this is what happens when you work on the railway too much you go loopy right so I've added a couple of handles um, fine scale track pins you've seen me do that plenty of time before so now we've got to add some color to it um, I'm going to use this dark blue gloss uh, 15 and I'm going to mix it with some of this dark blue uh, 25 now this blue is slightly lighter so hopefully mixing the two together we might end up with the a nice dark blue for the police box I've mixed up the two paints roughly about 50% each and I've got this lovely dark dark blue and uh, it looks about right so I'm just gonna paint the box up and just to see what this looks like when it's done and uh, yeah I think I've got the right color here now on the camera if I just get that zoomed in it looks too dark but in real life it's it's not as dark as that and I think it's uh, spot on but we shall see it's got to dry yet Let it go a little bit later when it's dry does it do it justice so we shall continue and we'll see what it looks like when it's dry I think the blue is a perfect match um, for a police um, call box as it were and uh, yeah it's, it's turned out quite well actually um, with the curved roof uh, yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I do seem to pick these um, strange buildings and uh, this could probably end up in the top 10 in a couple of years time. Um, the back I think I just left it plain so there's no cornice on the back I think I may have mentioned that already but yeah this will look uh, quite good on the bottom of them 39 steps police box on the layout. As you can see I've been doing a little bit of uh, messing around on the layout just adding some paving slabs. Um, Medcalf paving slabs of course and I've added a little bit of a flower bed there because I wasn't sure what to put in this space so I thought oh, I'd just put a flower bed in there. And um, yeah and I think that's the ideal position for the police box right under the bridge there. And as you can see, Roger Nix, that's what I've decided to call him now, Roger Nix is making his way up the 39 steps with the loot. And uh, PC Picking is unaware of it. Anyway, that may come to light when I wire up the police box. It's not wired up yet, so hopefully We'll get that wired up shortly. But in the meantime, I shall carry on um, paving the rest of this road um, following this pencil line here. And obviously, there's going to be a little bit of an alleyway along here, so that needs paving along that edge as well. But it's only a, only a small amount of paving. It's only going to be about 25mm. Uh, wide all the way down there because there's a building going here possibly another pub or it could be a pub come hotel but we shall see at long last we finally completed the scene um, that was a, a little bit of a marathon doing all this paving um, all the way around under the bridge and all the way up to the steps um, 
I didn't put that on film because I've done that many a times before how I go about um, laying these uh, Metcalf slabs. Anyway, the LED has now been wired up to the 12 volt supply, which uh, <laughs> kind of sets the scene now because uh, PC Pitkin is on full alert and um, if he's not too careful. Roger Nix, the rampant burglar of Tyneside, will get away. Anyway, we will return to this area because we have the birch halt in to put in place um, in this area. And um, it used to be uh, next to Tyne Dock Station but it was moved to make way for the Saracen's Head and ever since then it's been just sitting around here, there and everywhere waiting for its location but um, that will come in next week's video right so I think that's all from me this week uh, it's been a little bit of a hit and miss um, to get things done but um, I've finally done it I finally built a police box. A Yorkshire one at that. Anyway, thanks again for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.